Hello everyone, this is Mock here at The Gay Aristo and I'm here in the salon, which is the small drawing room in the turret of our baby castle here in Wales. And I thought it was about time that I gave you an update on my PhD. Some of you may know that I started a master's in country house studies in um, uh, 2021 with the University of Buckingham and I absolutely loved it. In fact, I loved it so much that I didn't want it to end. So I decided to convert my master's into a PhD. So although officially I've done kind of one year of the PhD, I've actually just done a year of you know, reading around about country house history and have landed on a subject that I want to cover in my PhD. And now I have five, yes, five years in which to research and write my dissertation. And my dissertation is, drum roll, the country house as a place of sanctuary, refuge and dissidence for the LGBTQ plus community. So how did they live in the country houses? Why did they go to the country house? So um, how did they, um, how did they arrive there? Why did they go there escaping um, the challenges of living in the metropolis, the fear of being arrested, the fear of persecution. And then when they lived in the country houses, starting in around 1900 is what I'm looking up, right to 2022, how did they inhabit the space? Uh, how did they use the space? How did they build communities? And how did the rural community around them impact on their living as well? And how has that changed? So I'm looking at three case studies. My first will be looking at my favourite, I've talked about him quite a bit, Cecil Beaton. Here is the fantastic autobiography, uh, authorised biography, sorry, by Hugo Vickers. Uh, and I'm also reading oh, all of his diaries. This one here, very kindly lent to me by a friend. Cecil Beaton's diaries, The Strenuous Years. So looking at his beautiful Arcadian house, Ashcombe House, and then when he was expelled from Ashcombe after 15 years and the lease was up, his move to Redditch House. Now I'm charting who came to Ashridge House and how did they live there? And my point or my argument is that Ashcombe was a performance house and Cecil Beaton was the director of his own performance really. And his weekend guests were characters in his play. Then the second uh, place that I'm looking at is the Bloomsbury Group. So I'm looking particularly at Vanessa Bell's house in Charleston, down on the south coast of England. How she lived there with her husband and his male lover. I'll also look at Lytton Stratchy and Dora Carrington and their house nearby. And I'm looking there about what I'm calling the experimental house. So how with their experimentation in coupling, in throupling, how did they defy some of the conventions of country house and bourgeois living, whilst at the same time really adhering to them, like changing for drinks, uh, changing for dinner, uh, drinks before dinner, uh, and all those sort of, sort of juxtapositions between bourgeois mannerism and real radical and distant living in, uh, in the Bloomsbury group um, with Dora Carrington, Lytton Stratchy and the guys and girls uh, at Charleston House. And then my third example brings it more up to date. And I'm looking at the houses of people like Nikki Haslam, <clears throat> the interior designer, Gavin Plumley, who you may remember I did a fantastic Instagram with a couple of months ago at his house, Steps House in rural Herefordshire. Uh, and then finally looking at the Stroud Cottage of Luke Edward Hall and his husband, Duncan Campbell. So starting to think about the country house due to changes in legislation and in society's uh, attitude towards LGBTQ plus people, how the country house for LGBTQ plus people has opened up, whether that is in writing books about living there, whether that is around a huge social media presence which Luke Edward Hall has, or whether it's Nicky Haslam inviting the magazines and some of his rather piquant articles, like how not to be common when living in the countryside. And I'm thinking about the argument, now that LGBTQ plus people are included, are they potentially doing the excluding? And the whole idea of a private house 
and now the unprivate house, the four walls of the house disappearing and due to social media and electronic devices, we are able to connect and live publicly. So that's where I am, uh, reading lots of fantastic books. In case you're interested, a couple of books I'd recommend. Secret Sexualities, a source book of 17th and 18th century writing. That's all about kind of the criminology. Uh, and one of the challenges of LGBTQ plus history is it's a history of criminals. Um, and that results in an interesting psychological state when you're looking at your heritage through the lens of it being convicted and being criminals. I'll be talking a little bit about that. Fantastic and really easy read. Through the keyhole, Sex and Scandal and the Secret Life of the Country House starts off with Ab Lady Abergavenny being discovered by a servant um, having a tryst. Um, fantastic book, Sex and Punishment, 4,000 years of judging desire, which goes right through, um, you know, pre-Bible, uh, right through to kind of, you know, real ancient history about how LGBTQ plus people turned up. Um, and then bring it a bit more up to date, Lord Montague uh, was a famous aristocrat who went to prison and was convicted for his gay relationships. Uh, and one of his friends, Peter Wildblood, wrote a book called Against the Law. And this was part of, um, well, Peter uh, was actually interviewed by the Wolfenden Committee. Um, who put together a report, the Wolfenden Report, which called for the legalisation of homosexuality. So, I am up to my here in books, but absolutely loving it. I've written, ha oh, oh, I had to write a first draft, or at least a kind of a structure for uh, my potential dissertation. And I've sent that off to my supervisor, and I have a call on Thursday morning with him to discuss his thoughts. He is a very eminent country house scholar and I'm very excited and very lucky to have him uh, supervising my PhD. So that's where I am, reading away, loving it. Um, I've got over the initial kind of fear and the sort of voice in my head saying, you've only got um, a GCSE in history, how on earth can you do a PhD in it? And now I'm just exploring the wonderful world of country houses and our LGBTQ plus ancestors, which I'm sharing here and on my Instagram at Gay Aristo. So if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your examples and any LGBTQ plus ancestors who lived in country houses that you think I should include. So thanks very much for watching this video. Do make sure you hit the bell and subscribe and I hope to see you soon with our next YouTube premiere which is going to be very exciting. We are going to St Fagans in Wales uh, which is part of History Wales, is Historic Wales um, and we are looking at their exhibition Pride and Protest and we're very lucky to be talking to the curator there about um, that exhibition, History of LGBTQ plus Pride and Protest in Wales. But for now, take care, and uh, wherever you are and whoever you love, I send you all my very best.